my name's Tracy Levesque. I come from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I love being here where people pronounce and spell my name correctly. That's pretty awesome. Um, I am going to talk about child themes. Our two presentations go so well together because, uh, like I was saying, he went into detail where I just brush upon and I go into detail about child themes that he just mentioned. Um, so, I like walking around. So, who am I? I my name is Tracy. I co own a web design development company in Philadelphia. Um, I uh, do mostly HTML and CSS and making themes for WordPress. Um, so these are my, this is my skill set. Um, I'm a geek, I can understand like in general, even if it's something that I don't know well, like programming or databases, I can understand what's going on. Um, I'm a front end developer, I use HTML and CSS um, to create websites and I use a text editor and FTP to do this. Uh-huh. Can you see me now? Oh, okay. All right. Um, um, I'm a designer. I use a bitmap editing program and vector editing programs to uh, make graphics for my websites, and I'm a WordPress lover and evangelical. These are the things that I'm not. Um, I'm not a mime, no. I'm uh, not a programmer. I can kind of wrap my head around PHP, but I couldn't write it from scratch, so I don't really know what's going on. Um, I'm not a sysadmin, I don't know how to manage your server, and I'm not a database expert. I couldn't like write SQL queries and things like that. But these are the things that I can do. These are some sites that I've created. So, what do all of those sites have in common? They are all child themes of 2010 or 2011. So, why use a child theme? Um, well, the number one rule in developing for WordPress is never, ever touch WordPress core code. Ever. That means don't touch core files, don't touch plugin files, and don't touch theme files. And why, why not? Um, because stuff gets broken. Um, other plugins and themes that you try to use may not work with your hacks, and then um, the worst is, you know, okay, sometimes when you first get, it, it, like a, a designer first gets started WordPress, they're like, oh, okay, oh, header. P oh, okay, I see. Oh, I see where all the theme files are, all right. I know where the CSS, CSS is. I'll just change it, da da da, da. Go to update WordPress um, themes and poof, blown out, they're gone. And then it's time to panic. So how do you customize the look and feel of a WordPress theme? Um, you create a theme, your own theme, that's a child of another theme. In this presentation, I'm going to be using um, 2011. So what happens is your child theme overwrites the design elements that you want changed and otherwise falls back to the parent theme. Um, but your child theme can also modify or add functionality to the parent theme. So how does it work? WordPress first looks for your child themes folder. What it does not find in there, it then loads from the parent theme. So in essence, you're creating this safe land in which you can do whatever you want. You can, you can make a mess. If you break something, you just undo it. You just remove your file. Otherwise, you have not touched any of the, the parents' um, files. All right, so let's get started. Um, how do you make a child theme? Um, is everybody familiar, or not everybody, are people familiar with um, the folders that make up WordPress install? Um, you have uh, wp-admin, wp-content, and inside there you have a plugins and themes folder. 
Um, inside the themes folder, each theme has its own folder. So when you first install WordPress, you have inside your themes folder, you have 2011 and you have 2010. Um, what you want to do is you want to create your own folder inside the themes folder called whatever you want, no spaces. Um, in this example, we're creating a folder called awesome. So what does your child theme need? It needs only one thing, but two is cooler. But you really only need one. You need a style.css file. Um, and this is the code you need at the top of your style.css file for your child theme to work. So you put in your theme name, the URL, description, author, you, um, you your URL. And then these things are very important. The template is the name of the folder that your parent theme is in. So in this case, it's 2011. And then this line is very important because it imports the style sheet from the parent theme. So you need these two things for your child theme to work. And then thing number two, which I always like to do, is to make a screenshot. Um, Screenshot.png, which if you're familiar with the WordPress admin under themes, um, you see a screenshot for each theme. And you don't want to, you know, have a child theme and not have a screenshot. It'll look sad. All right, so um, let's do this. That's okay. Okay, so here I have my, um, my style sheet. I've called my theme awesome. I have all my information in there. I make sure I have my uh, 2011 folder. Um, and then this really important line that imports the style sheet from 2011. I go into my FTP and now here, Here I have um, my WordPress install, and here's my computer. I have the two folders, 2011 and 2010, and I have my awesome folder. Now I've created a folder for awesome in my WordPress install. And I'm going to upload that style.css file. And then I've also made that screenshot, that PNG, and I'm going to upload that as well. Now here is my, um, my base install uh, testing site, demo site. Now, um, you know, everyone's probably familiar with this screen. I've gone into appearance themes, and now here's my parent theme up here, and oh, look, there's awesome. So all I do is activate that. Pow, now my child theme is in charge, but the parent, but still using the parent theme. Go back to my site and refresh, and nothing's different, because I haven't really done anything to it. But as of now, my, my, child, my child theme's running the show. So let's just go over what's happening right now. And this pretty much illustrates the way child themes work. Um, WordPress is now looking at my folder, awesome. And it looks at style.css, which modifies and adds to the parent style.css. Then I have my screenshot. The screenshot is just knocking at, wiping out the parent's version of a screenshot. And that's the two ways that um, your child theme's 
files affect the parent theme. You can either modify and add to it or just completely replace it. All right, make some style changes to the theme. You know, like on a cooking show where like, you know, they're telling you like how to, um, you know, make something and at the end they're like, oh, here it is. Um, that's what I've done with uh, my styles. So let's take a look. All right, so, you know, if you're, you're you know, theming and you're, is everybody familiar with something like um, Firebug or inspecting elements? Um, so when you start getting into web, develop, web design, um, you start right-clicking on things and seeing that, you know, maybe I want to make a change to the overall, you know, div, that the overall container of the site, and I'm like, all right, okay. It's an ID called page. So I go over to my style sheet, and I make a set of styles for page. And put some border radiuses on it and a nice little box shadow. I'm gonna save that. Upload it. Ta da! Oh, but look, there's that weird gray line at the top. Okay, what's that about? All right, so it's this branding. ID, go back to the style sheet. All right, I got rid of the line. So do you see how your child themes styles override the parent theme styles. As long as they're, they're named the same thing, you're using the same selectors, you just completely override the parent's styles. Say I want to change the font of the title. Pow. Maybe style the menu bar. Purple. Style the uh, widget areas. Sure. Whatever it is. Oh, um, she wanted me to check out Firebug again because she said sometimes I had classes and sometimes I had IDs. Um, usually ID is used when the element is used only once on the page and classes are for things that are repeated. So for instance, the header only happens once on the page. The widget areas are repeated, repeated, repeated. Um, so the way you figure out what you need to write in your child theme is just by inspecting these things. So dot widget is the thing that I wanted to change. And then something like uh, branding uses an ID instead of a class. Um, so, um, editing template files in your child theme. If you look in the 2011 folder, you see there's a ton of template files, and um, they went in pretty in-depth about template files in the last presentation. Um, but you can see that 2011 comes with a whole bunch of templates. Um, 
so you, what you do is when you want to change a template file is you make a copy of it and put it in your child theme, alter it, and when you upload it to your child theme, WordPress will look to your template file and not even, and it'll knock out the parent's template file. So how do you know what to edit? Um, the templates are pretty logically named, like header.php um, and footer.php and single.php for a single post and page.php for a page. But um, there are, I have a couple links to the anatomy of a WordPress theme um, and the template files that um, was in the previous presentation. And it actually goes through and shows you exactly what all the different templates do. Um, So let's make some template changes in our child theme. So um, one thing that you may want to do if you're making a site for a client is take out the um, Proudly powered by WordPress. No, no offense. WordPress is I love WordPress, but clients don't often want like the the credit in their site. So that information is contained in footer.php. So let me open the. So this is 2011's footer. Here you can see this ID site generator. And that is where all that proudly powered by WordPress information is. You can pretty much just wipe out this entire div, which I've done in my version of the file. And now the, uh, and now the, um, that credit is taken out. But not only is the credit taken out, I added something to it. Um, what I did is I used template tags. Um, their template tags lets you insert dynamic content into your WordPress templates. Um, there are include and function tags. They're used to grab and display information or execute other template files. Um, for instance, there's, you can get the date, you can grab the URL of the home page, you can grab um, blog info, you can make a list of your site pages. There's just, it's, there's so many things you can do with template tags. Um, and then there's conditional tags. Uh, tags that say, they're used to grab and display content depending on what page it is and what the, in the conditions it matches. So you can say, if this is the home page, don't show this, but show this instead. If it's a single post, you know, just show this and this. So let's uh, use some template tags. Here in my uh, footer, I'm using some template tags and a conditional tag. I have a copyright, and I am echoing the date and just the year. Because nothing's worse, like when you go to an old site, it's like copyright, like 2011, like they just manually hard-coded it in there. Um, so this automatically echoes the current date. Um, and then I have another thing, I'm grabbing the name of the blog that you have set in settings, like there's name and description, I'm grabbing what's put in the name, and then I'm wrapping uh, the, the URL to the home page um, 
So when you click on the name, it goes to the home page. And all, this is all using um, include tags. And then I have a conditional tag say, here saying, if this is the front page, then echo this little you know, credit for us. And this is what we usually put on a, um, you know, we like to put a little you know, design by Yikes on a client site, but we don't want to be obnoxious and have it on like every single page. So we have it only on the home page. So that's what it spits out. Copyright, the year, the name, a link to the name, and then our little credit. But if you click on another page, little credit's not there. So then there's, uh, so there's all the templates that already exist that you can make a copy of in your child theme and modify and then upload and then they knock out the parent. But what about creating a new template that doesn't exist in 2011? Um, you can do that as well. If everybody's familiar with um, editing a page and then you can choose from three different templates that come with 2011, there's a the default, the showcase, and the sidebar. You can also create your own template that will show up in that list that you can choose when you make a new page. So what does your template file need? It only needs um, a few things. It needs a name. This goes at the top of your file, template name, and you type your name in. And then you need at least uh, the header include tag and the footer include tag. Beyond that, it's really sky's the limit as to what you want to put in your template. So we're going to make a template called kittens. So here I have my file name, kittens. Um, I have the header. I have the basic layout of page. Actually, all this is is page.php that I've modified to make my own template. Um, and the only thing that's different about this than page is I've added a little div at the bottom called kittens. I'll upload the kittens template. Now when I go into pages and edit a page, It appears now under the template dropdown. It's now going to choose it, update. I have some images that go along with the kitten's div. Ta-da! <laughs> so now every page that I assign that kittens template to will have a band of kittens at the bottom. Sure. Did, oh, wait, oh, the question was, when I make use of my own templates, do I over... To use a document hierarchy? Well, you're just kind of adding more to the document hierarchy. Because the doc document, you're not like overriding the, the natural hierarchies. So, like first look for this one, then look for that one. If it's a single post and default, everything defaults back to index. All you're doing is you're saying, please use my template. But everything, all the other pieces are, you're just another, you know, piece in the chain, I guess. You're not like breaking the hierarchy. So uh, modifying functionality. Um, functions.php is uh, a file that is a dangerous file. Um, but it's a file that like, pretty much runs all the functionality of your theme. Um, instead of uh, taking a copy of functions and hacking it, it doesn't really work that way. It's like functions doesn't 
override functions in the parent theme. It modifies and adds to functions in the parent theme. Um, so some of the things that functions.php controls are like um, custom post types, customizing the more link, um, customizing the way the admin looks, changing the excerpt length, um, enabling short codes and widgets. You know, you can't use short codes and widgets out of the box. Um, you can add custom thumbnail sizes. You can pretty much do a million different things. So I'm going to use an example of changing the uh, header image size at the top. You know at the top of 2011 you have that gigantic header image at the top and it has, it's a certain width and height. Um, you can use the functions.php file in your child theme to override what that width and height are. So here's my functions.php. I only have this thing in here about the height and width. I'm making a little filter. Remember the actions and filters? I'm intercepting what uh, the parent does in applying my own width and height. So I'm saying I want the, wi the width to be 1,000 pixels and the height to be 200 instead of super tall like it usually is. Okay, so now I've uploaded that into my theme. Go to appearance header, and now it's saying images should be 1,000 pixels wide, suggested height is 200, instead of what it used to be. And now I can upload a 1,000 by 200 image. Oh. Ta-da. All right, so let's take a look at where we are right now. So now, WordPress is looking at my child theme called Awesome. Functions.php is modifying and adding to the parents' functions.php. Style.css is modifying and adding to style.css of the parent. Um, I have footer and screenshot, which completely knocks out footer and screenshot in the parent theme, and I've added something brand new, kittens, that does not exist in the parent theme. Um, so I've been talking about 2011 this whole time, but what about other parent themes um, or starter themes? There are a ton of awesome uh, themes out there that people have built that you can use either as a parent theme or a starter theme. And a starter theme or a development theme is a theme that is intended to be hacked. You're, it, they want you to make it your own. It's okay to um, edit the files and make it your own. Um, one is underscores, and that's done by the folks at Automatic. And that's actually the, it's apparent, all the WordCamp, the new WordCamp sites that are coming out are actually child themes of uh, underscores theme. Um, if you like Twitter Bootstrap, if you like um, HTML5, if Boilerplate, if you're a fan of responsive design, someone has made either a parent or development starter theme that uses those things. So where do you go from here? Um, so once you start getting into theme development, you can spend a lot of time looking at the WordPress codex. It has a Great information, just everything you need to know. Um, and then there's other sites like uh, WP Snippets that has like little code snippets because you know I'm a you know I'm just a uh, HTML and CSS designer that doesn't want to bug a programmer to help me as 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 long you know as much as I can. Like I really love figuring things out on my own, even though I don't know PHP. Um, you can get really far just with the great community and so much 
help out there and information. All right. Questions? 